Hello and welcome to our webinar, Library Love for Library Reads. I'm Annie Bostrom, Associate Editor in Adult Books at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom an hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. If you have any trouble accessing these materials, please contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Last but not least, Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned earlier. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Lainey Mays, Marketing Associate at HarperCollins Publishers, Emily Ludlaw, Library Marketing Associate at Sourcebooks, and Rebecca Benuk, Executive Director at Library Reads. First, we'll hear from Lainey Mays. Lainey is the Marketing Associate of the Library Marketing Team at HarperCollins. Originally from Mississippi, her hobbies include listening to any podcast she can find. She produces the Library Love Fest podcast, a podcast that brings librarians and great books together through author interviews, conversations with editors, and upcoming book presentations. Thanks for being here today, Lainey. Hi, so excited to be here. So I have a lot of books for you, so I'm going to get started. On the next slide, just a quick reminder, everything we talk about is on librarylovefest.com. And then on the next slide, we have Galley Club. It's actually happening right now, but don't worry. You can watch the replay every Tuesday. We pick a book once a month to dive into. And on the next slide, we have our podcast. As you heard, I'm very into podcast. And we have a Library Reads episode every month that we have books on the list. We call the authors and hear from them. So I hope you check that out. Next. Okay, the Paul Bearers Club, first book. So Paul Tremblay is back. It's twist on a popular topic. He, in his previous novels, he's delved into ghosts and home invasions and apocalypses, and he's taking on more of the supernatural in this book. He lends, uh, blends literary fiction and psychological suspense so well, and his profile has really been growing. Um, Survivor Song was one of NPR's best books of the year, and it was also a July 2020 Library Reads pick. Stephen King tweeted to his followers saying it was absolutely riveting. And he's back. So in this book, we have Art. He's a 17 year old high school loner in the 80s. He has an extracurricular club he started called the Paul Bearers Club. They have poorly attended funerals, they go and help out. And it's very odd, I know, but he makes a new friend this way. And as anyone who shows up that doesn't go to school with him, she's a little odd um, going to a Paul Bearers Club meeting. And they get into a fight um, after they become friends. And then decades later, Art tries to make sense of it by writing a memoir called the Paul Bearers Club. And he gives um, the friend, she gets a manuscript of this and she has some issues with it. And it's really meta because she writes in the margins. It's really cool. Um, and it blurs this, these lines between fiction and memory and the supernatural and the mundane. It's super, super fun. Um, next is Arjun by Diane McKinney Whetstone. Diane is the author of the critically acclaimed novels, Tumbling, Tempest Rising, as, and many others. She's a recipient of numerous awards, including the American Library Association's Black Caucus Literary Pro Award for Fiction, which she's won twice. And she was a contributor to Essence Magazine. Um, so in this book, we have The Gym, which is short for sexagenarian. It's an upscale 55 plus community located in the suburbs of Philadelphia. The main character, Cynthia, is, befriends the other two black residents, Block and Tish, as well as Lavia, who everyone assumes is from India. And they regularly get together to smoke weed and line dance and debate politics and all of that comes with retirement. Um, and of course there's wine. And beneath the, the fun and froth, there, there's some secrets. And so the narrative shifts between the characters past and present and their suspense as, long as, in, as well as insight and humor. It's gonna be great for book clubs. 
And it's a, you know, there's this resurgence of tales of life after retirement, the ever perennial golden girls or Grace and Frankie, and that's really going to live well with those stories. Next, we have When We Were Bright and Beautiful by Jillian Medoff. This is the fifth book from bestselling um, author Jillian. She wrote I Couldn't Love You More. This book is really poised to get a wide audience, and there's so much in-house love. It, it blew me away. Um, Cassie Quinn is 23. She returns to her glitzy Upper East Side childhood home to support her family after her younger brother is accused of sexually assaulting his ex-girlfriend. They go to Princeton. So she goes back. She walks into this glamorous world of money and privilege that she kind of tried to escape. And um, she's also recovering herself from a years long affair with an older, more powerful man. And she doesn't really believe her brother could do this. So she's reconciling that thought of like how he could do something like this or did he and um, this other relationship she had that she's kept secret. And so his wealth, the brother's wealth and status really makes him a good person to make an example of and throw the book at. And so lots of lawyers are called in. There's a media circus and Cassie may have to reveal the past of her relationship to understand and come to terms with this current situation. Lots of twists and a twist I was not even expecting. So that's a fun read and you'll want to discuss it. Readers of My Dark Vanessa will love this and um, it's a really big one for us. We're pulling out all the stops. Next is Thank You for Listening by Julia Whalen. So Julia is a lifelong actor with lots of insight into Hollywood. She's an award-winning audiobook narrator. She did education, if you're not a aware of her work. Um, she's really putting all of that into this new book. It's fun and an aspect of the book business you haven't really seen before. And so her debut novel, My Oxford Year, was so great and witty, charming and delightful. So if you haven't read that, please go read that. But this new one is about um, a audiobook narrator, Swanee, who had an acting career, but she had an accident and now she has taken up behind the mic to take care of her ailing grandmother. She used to do romance in a pseudonym, but she put that away. She's not really buying what the romance novel is selling. And after a whirlwind night in Vegas, she comes back to a job. Her, um, one of the world's most loved romance novelists who she used to work for wants her to perform the last book with Brock McKnight, the industry's hottest voice, but she doesn't buy what romance novels are selling. Um, and so she's like, well, I don't know, but she takes it for the money. And then you get to, to see her and Brock forge a relationship over text, which is kind of cool. So you see that back part of it. Next is Mika in Real Life Amiko by Amiko Jean. So this is a heartwarming, emotional book about um, a woman in identity. And it's from best-selling author of, the best-selling author of Tokyo Ever After, which was a Reese Witherspoon, Hello Sunshine, Summer YA book club pick. Um, and in this, we have Mika, who is, her life's a little bit of a mess. Uh, her Japanese mother wants her to get her life together, settle down with an eligible man from church. It's all she really wants, but she feels like a disappointment to her, especially when she gets fired from her dead end job. And on the worst day, all this is happening. She receives a phone call from Penny, the daughter she gave up for adoption 16 years ago. Penny wants to know more about her heritage and Mika, Mika wants to be everything she's not. So she tells a lie, it snowballs into something else. And she has to deal with connections um, with Penny and her widowed adopted father and Penny and her Amika's mom, the grandmother, they connect like she never did. And she becomes friends with, um, with her. And so as she's kind of putting that together of like a relationship she didn't have and trying to have one with her daughter, it's really interesting. I think Gilmore Girls, to be honest, when reading it, like it's funny, emotional, but like those mother-daughter relationships. Um, and there's a lot of baggage, but, but like I said, really funny. So next is The Women Could Fly by Megan Giddings. You may remember Megan's debut novel, Lakewood, a really beloved house author. We had such fantastic reception for the first book. It earned two NAACP nominations. Um, and we hope to bring her to a wider audience. The first book came out in March of 2020. So some other things are going on. But we're excited about this one. This is a dystopian novel, um, but it's also social commentary. And the, the mother of Josephine, the main character, um, she disappears and she's heard every theory imaginable, um, including that she was a witch and this worries her the most because in a world where witches are real, the peculiar behavior raises suspicions, especially of a black woman. 14 years have passed, she's ready to let it go, but the state starts mandating women marry by 30 or enroll in a monitored registry and she feels even more connected to her mother. And so it's, it's great for book clubs, strong women, a bit of magic, and the book is in development for a long form TV series at Amazon Studios. Next is On the Rooftop by Margaret Wil Wilkerson Sexton, um, author of the highly acclaimed The Revisioners and A Kind of Freedom. Um, it's a 
breakout novel. It'll set on shelves with Britt Bennett and Jacqueline Woodson, set in 50 San Francisco, inspired by Fiddler on the Roof. If you're a fan of that, you'll love it. If not, it's just a great historical fiction. Um, three sisters dance and sing. They are monitored by their mother. They become the salvations on stage. And in order to break them out, there's a lot of uh, work to, to be done and they don't necessarily want to follow their mother's dreams. Um, it's also set against a gentrifying neighborhood um, and it's a family portrait of a vivid city changing, mirroring the changes in these women's lives. And you're right there in that cup with them, great atmosphere. Next is Angelica Frankenstein makes her match. So excited for a new Sally Thorne book. Um, if you watch The Hating Game, that was her debut and it's now a movie, it's on Hulu. Um, and now she's returning with a Halloween rom-com, very different from Sally, but anything Sally puts out, I will read. Um, so it's about Angelica Frankenstein, Victor Frankenstein's spoiled sister and assistant, and a quest to make her own dream man. And there's a lot of chemistry. I, sorry, not sorry, had to do it. Um, perfect for spooky season, and it's a different type of book um, for her, but she just has that classic trademark, trademark Sally Thorne wit and charm. And uh, Second First Impressions, her last book was made April 2021, Library Books. Next is All That's Left Unsaid by Tracy Lian. I so enjoyed this book. It's predominantly told through the eyes, sometimes switching with other side characters of Key, first generation Vietnamese immigrant. She's in her mid twenties. She has left her small town life in Australia and moved to Melbourne, but now she's pulled back after her little brother is suddenly killed under mysterious circumstances. So she takes it upon herself to find out what happened when she decides either the police don't care about this small, community of uh, Vietnamese immigrants or they're too scared to tell the police what happened and it's really vibrant the town is dangerous you see it through the lens of someone who came back um, but it's what I really enjoyed is that it explores what these first generation kids feel they feel suffocated by the weight of taking care of their family um, like translating etc and so they're in this society that will just never accept them um, it's a story of reconciliation and it's it's truly beautiful so I hope you check it out Next is Merry Little Meet Cute, Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. So co-written by best new, number one New York Times bestselling author Julie Murphy and USA Today bestselling author Sierra Simone. It's about a woman named B. Hobbs, aka Bianca Von Honey. She has a successful career as a plus size adult film star, but she is cast in a squeaky clean Hope Channel romance. <laughs> and she kind of has to put her job on the back burner. I can't really tell people about that. Um, and so she keeps it a secret and she discovers her co-star is Nolan Shaw, her childhood crush and an ex-boy band member in desperate need of career rehab. Um, and it, the heat turns up in Christmas Notch, Vermont. And uh, there's now a reporting sniffing around trying to know more about him, but also maybe they'll uncover what, what she's hiding too. Um, we hope to bring this to a really varied readership. Um, they both have a, a rabid fan base. And Julia has made the crossover to adult titles with her success of If the Shoe Fits, which was a number one August 2021 library read pick. It's very positive, sex positive and body positive and just an adorable cover. I love that cover so much. Okay, next is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Very excited to have another Kingsolver novel. She's so beloved. Um, we're getting a story now about a young boy's journey, a coming of age story set in the mountains of Southern Appalachia. It's a story of a boy born born to a teenage single mother. They live in a single wide trailer, they have nothing. And as you may can guess by the title, he has copper colored hair and he has a way of surviving. Um, that's his gift. And this plot told in his own voice tells the trials of foster care and child labor, athletic success, addiction, and it reckons with his own invisibility, especially in pop culture where even superheroes have abandoned the rural people in favor for cities. It's a modern twist on David Copperfield and by using this Victorian epic novel to show the American South, the contemporary American South, King Solver really reflects on Dickens' anger and compassion, but above all, faith in the transformation um, of a good story. And it's a defense of an area that has not been given its due, an area that is abandoned and exploited and just a fantastic book with humor, insight and a really touching protagonist. And Unsheltered, her best book was in October, 2018, Library Reads Pick. Next is Eyes Turn Skyward by Elena Dillon. Okay, something different for Elena, very different. We're going historical fiction. She's never done historical fiction before, but it is fabulous. This is an amazing dual narrative um, between World War II and modern day. So we have Kathy, who is an empty nester and she's a primary caretaker of her ailing mother and emotional support of her laid off husband. And re she's returning to the office after borderline inappropriate boss after two decades of not working there. 
And her mother, Peggy, has held a secret from her daughter for decades. She wasn't just a wife and mother. She was part of the Women Air Force um, as a, a service pilot. And she became a WASP in World War II, one of the first females to fly a military aircraft. And this book is like this unforgettable story of like female heroism and the transformation of misogyny and reconciliation. But it, it's going to be a breakout, I'm hoping, for her because she um, can just do so many different kinds of stories so well. Um, and so it really does explore how women take on so much. They pick up the second shift work of taking over elder care, going to work and doing what their husbands can't to stay at home, but also like having another job and um, doing a lot of emotional work. So there's a lot to discuss and there's a Me Too era aspect as well. And Mercy House was her debut and it made the February 2020 library reads list. And then next and last is one I'm very excited to tell you about. We, sorry, my sometimes really loud on my window. We All Want Impossible Things by Catherine Newman. This is a book I'm envious of anyone who reads for the first time. Edith and Ashley have been best friends for 42 years. They've shared the mundane and the momentous life together, marriages, infertility, children. They've been through it all, they're best friends. And now the unthinkable has happened. Edie is dying of ovarian cancer and spending her last days at hospice near Ash away from her family. Ash stumbles into heartbreak and has her own daughters and her own ex-husband ish, ex ish because they're still kind of together and dear friends and poorly chosen lovers. And she's just finding a way to cope. And it's so beautiful. It's, it's just connecting and telling this love and loss, but also of how you deal with that. And they reminisce together and they struggle to be an imperfect friend, wife and parent. And it's funny and devastating and entirely uplifting. Um, it did a great job of explaining the intricacies of grief and loss without feeling like a cliche. It was very different in the best way. A book that you make a contract with, it's gonna be sad, I'm just telling you, but think 100 years of Lenny and Margot and, and that's, that's the emotion that you bring into it. It's, it's so beautiful. Um, and that's all the time I have, but thank you. And I hope you, oh, there's some e-galleys that are on the way of other Library Reads winners in the past that maybe would interest you. They'll be up soon. And that's all for me. That's my email. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lainey. We will now hear from Emily Ludloff. Emily is a Library Marketing Associate at Sourcebooks. Previously, she worked with some of the top names in the music industry in Nashville, Tennessee, but ultimately could not resist the pull of her first love, books. Take it away, Emily. All right, wonderful. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you again to Booklist for having me on this lovely webinar. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to talk to you about some upcoming books that we recommend for library reads. All of these titles are on NetGalley and Edelweiss, and of course, feel free to reach out with any questions you have. Next slide. Um, all right, so as I said, my name is Emily Ludloff, um, and we would love to, for you to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Sourcebooks Library if you aren't already. I am going to start off this presentation with some adult fiction titles from Sourcebooks Landmark. Next slide, please from the author of the New York Times bestseller, The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek, comes The Book Woman's Daughter, a delightful return to the librarians and blue people of Kentucky. Honey Lovett, the daughter of Cussie Mary and Jackson, find herself back in Troublesome Creek, where she takes on a library route and befriends a coal miner and a fire lookout. Together, these three women must find strength in their friendships and the power of books, in order to overcome prejudice, isolation, and the unforgiving Appalachian landscape. Next. When the opportunity arises for Nora to work for Vinyl Magazine as the assistant to the iconic editor-in-chief Loretta James, Nora jumps at the once-in-a-lifetime chance in A Hundred Other Girls. But it quickly becomes clear that there is a darker side to Vinyl. The old school print team and the new age digital team are at war with each other, sabotaging one another's content, poaching talent, and exposing secrets. As both sides attempt to use her as a spy in their corporate warfare, Nora must also juggle the relentless dance, uh, demands of her job, 
her own goals, all while navigating a tentative new friendship with a brilliant editor, a fallout with her sister, and an ill-advised attraction to the hot IT guy. Next, please. From the author of the acclaimed In My Dreams I Hold a Knife comes That Last Housewife, a dark thriller about a woman determined to take down a patriarchal cult and avenge the woman in her life. During their senior year of college, Shay Evans and her best friend Laurel escaped from a violent magnetic man and his equally violent views of women. Eight years later, Shay has built a new life for herself. But the horrifying news of Laurel's death shatters her world and makes her suspect that the people from her past are back and more dangerous than ever. Recruiting the help of a true crime podcast host, Shay is determined to find out the truth. When clues lead her to a secret cult devoted to male superiority, she discovers what happened eight years ago was only the beginning. Next, please. Meg erases herself to become whoever you need her to be. She slides alongside you and tells you exactly what you want to hear. And by the time she's done, you've lost everything. Kat has been waiting 10 years for the woman who upended her life to return. And now that she has, Kat is determined to be the one to expose her. But as the two women grow closer, Kat's long held assumptions begin to crumble leaving Kat to wonder who Meg's true target really is in The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark. Next slide. So what if Nazi Germany had won the war? Widowland is an alternative history feminist dystopian novel with a literary twist that blends elements of The Handmaid's Tale and The Men in the High Castle. Rose Ransom works for the Ministry of Culture editing classic books to fit in better with the new Nazi regime. When graffiti that quotes subversive lines by famous women start popping up all over the country, Rose finds herself embroiled in the investigation to discover the criminals behind it. Caught up in an assassination plot, she is forced to choose between the language of the law and that of her heart. Next slide, please. In The Ways We Hide, Fenevas is the assistant to an unruly escape artist, working behind the curtain as the mastermind of their act. After all, her honed ability to control her surroundings and elude entrapments, physical or otherwise, reliably suppresses the trauma and tragedy of her youth. For all her calculations, however, Fena neglects to foresee being called upon by British intelligence. Tasked with creating escape tools to thwart the Germans, MI9 seeks those with specialized skills for a war nearing its breaking point. Fenna reluctantly joins the unconventional group of inventors, but delving deeper into the fray means a confrontation with her past and stakes more treacherous than she ever imagined. Next slide. In the banned bookshop of Maggie Banks, Maggie Banks arrives to run her friend's, best friend's struggling bookstore, and she expects to sell bestsellers to the small town clientele. But with the town on the map as a top literary destination and the historical society bent on keeping business historic, Maggie is banned from selling anything written this century. To help save the store, Maggie starts an underground book club a series of events celebrating the books readers actually love. But keeping the club quiet, selling her customers the books they want, and dodging the historical society is nearly impossible, especially when Maggie unearths a town secret that could upend everything. Next slide, please. In the storyteller's death, Isla Loren Sanchez is left in Puerto Rico with her great aunt each summer, like a piece of forgotten luggage. luggage. It is only when Isla turns 18 and her grandmother, a great storyteller, dies, that Isla discovers she has a gift. The tales of dead family storytellers are brought back to life, replaying themselves over and over and over in front of her. 
when Isla has a vision of an old murder mystery, she realizes that if she can't solve it and make the loop end, these seemingly harmless stories could cost her her life. Next slide. So let's introduce some mystery into our lives with titles from our Poison Pen Press imprint. Next slide, please. In The Woman in the Library, Hannah receives a fan letter from a distant friend asking after her newest mystery. Delighted by the inquiry, she responds with a few pages of a novel she's working on about four strangers who become inseparable after a murder is discovered at their library. Thrilled and intrigued, her friend Leo writes back with some helpful advice. The four friends Hannah created will have to help her create a world that absorbs Leo's increasingly insistent dark attention in this clever puzzle within a puzzle about an author trying to write her own fate without losing control of the story. Next slide. When two strangers break into a house on a remote lake, what starts as a simple blur burglary turns into a nightmare for all involved. Emmett Burr has secrets he's been keeping in his basement for more than two decades, and he'll do anything to keep his past from being revealed, even taking two teenagers hostage. Former police officer Ben Packard is leading the investigation into the missing teens. As clues dry up and time runs out to save them, Packard is forced to reveal his own secrets and dig deep to uncover the dark past of the place he calls home. Next slide, please. And let's get into one of my favorite nonfiction titles that reads like fiction. Next slide, please. Helltown is a true crime. It takes us back to the winter of 1969 when the bodies of four young women were discovered in a cemetery near the tip of Cape Cod. As investigators would soon learn, their perpetrator was a young, handsome serial killer named Tony Costa. He was a bizarre former taxidermist with a split personality and a perchant for violence. Costa ultimately mobilized friends in the hippie community for support and retribution. And this story captivated literary icons and rivals, Kurt Vonnegut and Norman Mueller. Costa embarked on a daring cat and mouse game with investigators who, as the body count kept growing, were desperate to put an end to the killing season on Cape Cod. Next slide, please. Get your fans and glasses of water ready for these spicy titles from Bloom Books. Next slide, please. In a game of retribution, Hera approaches Hades with a plan to overthrow Zeus, but he declines to get involved. As punishment, Hera sentences Hades to perform a series of labors. Each feat seems more impossible than the last and draws his attention away from Persephone, whose own tragedy has left her questioning whether she can actually be queen of the underworld. Hades has been waiting for Persephone for generations. And now that he's found her, will he be able to keep her? Find out in a game of retribution. Next slide, please. Queen of Myth and Monsters picks up where King of Battle and Blood left off. Isolde, newly coronated queen, has finally found a king worthy of her in the vampire Adrian. But their love for each other has cost Isolde her father and her homeland. Now, as politics in the Red Palace grow more underhanded and a deadly blood mist threatens all of Cordova, Isolde must trust in the bond she's formed with Adrian even as she learns troubling information about his complicated past. Next slide. Let's round out this presentation with some books to swoon for from Sourcebooks Casablanca. Next slide, please. Feeling nostalgic on the eve of his birthday, Ren Nolan sends emails to all the boys he <clears throat> loved before he came out. Morning brings the inevitable Oh God, what did I do? But he brushes that panic aside. None of the could have beens are actually going to read his emails, much less respond, right? 
Enter Derek Haverford, Ren's number one pre-coming out crush and his drive-in theater's new social media intern. Too bad he doesn't feel the same way about the infamous almost kiss that once rocked Ren's world. Wink. Whatever. Ren's no longer a closeted teenager. He can survive this. But as their hazy summer becomes consumed with a special project that may just save the struggling drive-in for good, Ren and Derek are drawn even closer. And maybe, finally, Ren's dream of a perfect kiss before the credits is within reach. Next slide. In Olympus, you either have the power to rule or you are ruled. Zeus may have decided Helen's hand in marriage is the prize for the new Ares, but Helen has other plans. She enters the competition herself as a middle finger to the meddling 13 rulers, effectively vying for her own hand. Unfortunately, there are those who would rather see her dead than leave the city. The only people she can trust are those that she can't keep her hands off of. Achilles and Patrocles. But can she really believe that they have her best interests at heart when every stolen kiss is a battlefield? Next slide, please. In boyfriend material, Luke and Oliver met, pretended to fall in love, fell in love for real, dealt with heartbreak and disappointment and family and friends, and somehow still figured out a way to make it work. Now, it seems like everyone around them is getting married and Luke's feeling the social pressure to propose, but it'll take more than four weddings, a funeral, and a bowl full of special curry to get these two from, I don't know what I'm doing, to, I do. Next slide, please. 25-year-old Lily Baines is used to waking up hungover and underemployed. Waking up with fangs, though? Not so much. But when it turns out a little light necking has more serious consequences than she ever imagined, Lily's determined to get to the bottom of it. Tristan hadn't meant to turn Lily. It is against vampire law. But now that she's here, they need to team up to save their own hides. They strike a truce, fending off other vampires, all while Lily faces down her own insecurities in a body that will never age, never die, and never change. Can she learn to love the woman she'll be forevermore? Find out in When Life Gives You Vampires. Next slide, please. And that is all for me. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much again to Booklist for putting together this webinar. Please reach out to me at this email if you have any questions. And don't forget to vote for Library, library Reads. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emily. We'll now hear from Rebecca Vanuk. Rebecca is the Executive Director of Library Reads, a nonprofit organization that works with public library staff and U.S. publishers to promote adult reading. She has an MLIS from Dominican University and worked as a Reader's Advisory Librarian for a decade. And prior to joining Library Reads, she was the editor for collection management and library outreach, outreach at our very own Booklist magazine. Rebecca is the author of three reference books on the topic of women's fiction, as well as a best-selling book on reading library collections. Take it away, Rebecca. Thanks so much, Annie. I love all my book list friends, and so thank you for inviting us to come and talk about library reads. So I'm just going to spend a very short amount of time telling you all about library reads and some quick details about how our list is created and how you can become part of creating that list. Library Reads is a registered 501c6 nonprofit organization. We are not a charity, however, um, so don't worry, we will never hit you up for money or membership fees. <laughs> um, we actually, I like to think of us sort of like a chamber of commerce for publishing. So that's, that's sort of where our organization falls. But our mission is the important part. So our mission is to connect adults with books that library staff across the country recommend. We also do free training and events for library staff centered on reader's advisory for adult patrons. So what I'm excited about is our hopeful return to some in-person conferences and events uh, so that we can share all 
that stuff with you. And again, we will always have free training opportunities. It's very important to our goals and our mission. Now to that end, if you have a conference or an event coming up in your local area, whether that's your consortium or maybe you've got some state library training, if there's something that you think library reads would be great at sponsoring or at coming to do a presentation on Reader's Advisory for, please reach out and let me know because we're very interested in doing more of that as time goes on. My email is going to be um, on the last slide of my presentation, so feel free to shoot me an email. Next slide. So this is a quick little infographic about how our list is created. And if you can't read it very well on the screen, don't worry, it's also on our website. Um, we advocate for adult books of all types, fiction and nonfiction, so please vote for your favorites every month. And you might be wondering, if you're not already doing it, how do you vote? So anyone who works in a public library in the U.S. is eligible to vote. It doesn't matter what your job is, what your title is, whether you have an degree or not, as long as you are working in a public library in the US, you read adult books and you love to share your recommendations, you are in. One of us, one of us. Uh, the only requirement is that you need to be signed up for NetGalley or Edelweiss or both, and those are free services. So it's that requirement as, as well as working in a public library. Next slide. Our list comes out monthly on the 15th, and we publish the list on our website, along with a link to a printable PDF flyer that you can use in your library for display or handout purposes. You do the voting, we collect those votes via NetGalley and Edelweiss, and the top vote getter becomes the number one pick. It is a top 10 list every month with a variety of genres. Next slide. In 2018, we introduced the Hall of Fame for those favorite authors that appear regularly on the list. So technically, we are no longer just a top 10 list. There have been months where we've been a top 15, top 12. I think in July 2021, that was our blockbuster month where we had a whopping 12 Hall of Fame authors. So that was 22 new books for you guys to know about. What we really like about the Hall of Fame is it recognizes our perennially popular authors while opening up space on the monthly list for a broader selection of authors. Basically, when an author's third title makes the list via votes, they enter our Hall of Fame. Now, uh, the Hall of Fame title does still need to be voted for. So don't think that, oh, just because I already like Jasmine Guillory and she's been in the Hall of Fame, I don't have to vote for her anymore. Nope, we want you to still keep voting for your favorite authors. Just know that they might be moved over into our Hall of Fame. Next slide. So if you visit our website, libraryreads.org, and actually ignore that URL that's on the screen right now, um, I made a mistake. We have a participate tab on our page. It doesn't, if you go to libraryreads.org slash participate, you're going to get an error. So don't do that. Uh, but just go to libraryreads.org and hit the participate tab, and you will find all kinds of specific details on how to use Edelweiss and or NetGalley for voting. You can find quick little videos on our YouTube channel, which is also linked on our page. Those will walk you through signing up for NetGalley and Edelweiss. There is also a video tutorial on how to write annotations for a chance to have your annotation featured on one of our monthly lists. Um, our YouTube channel can be found at youtube.com slash library reads. So you'll, I think they're like 10 minute videos, so not even too much of your time taken up. But you'll also find on our participate tab that you uh, can see some screenshots of what it looks like to find your books, how to review them, and how to make sure your vote is saved for library reads. Next slide. I'd also like to encourage everyone to follow our social media accounts. On the 15th of every month when the list comes out, we push our list out not only during, during oops, not only via our email newsletter, which you can sign up for on the bottom of every page on our website, but we also post the individual titles on our social media. And all of our links for social media are on our website. Next slide.
So why should you participate in library reads? First of all, um, we all should know this, hopefully you all feel this in your souls. As library staff, you are the people in this world who know books, right? And you know people and you know readers. And so Library Reads was really created to take advantage of that. Um, a bookstore does sort of the same thing, but let's face it, they're trying to make money and they're trying to sell books. That's always the lovely thing about libraries is we are there to just make people informed and aware. And so participating in library reads is really kind of a special thing. Now, as an individual, here are some of the things that it can really do for you. It can help increase your familiarity with different publishers. It increases your awareness of new books. It enhances your reader's advisory skills and improves patron experiences by connecting readers to new reads. Now, the way I've always liked to say it is, if you pay attention to the library reads list every month, you have got 10 book recommendations that you didn't necessarily have to read. <laughs> One of the things I like about our list is we have these wonderful library staff written annotations that go along with it that give you just just enough to know about the book so you can think to yourself, hey, I've got a patron that would like exactly this, or this is something that would be a great read alike for that. So to me, it's a great way to kind of fill your brain up with books. Next slide. You can also use library reads, not just for your own personal professional development, but in your library. You can check the list against your orders to add more to great books to your collection. Uh, we do have this wonderful relationship with all kinds of different library focused vendors, such as Ingram, Baker and Taylor. Um, they create library reads carts that are pre-filled with our monthly list so that you can easily add those to your orders every month. You can also use our list for reader's advisory. Like I just said, here's 10 more books minimum that you can pretend that you've read. <laughs> um, many of our annotations also point out things that are good for book group choices, which I know is always a hot thing. And you can always feel free, your library should feel free to use our content for your library's Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, and web website. Next slide. So we have an FAQ page on our website. I wanted to quickly point out some of the questions that we get the most. Votes are due by the first of the month, the month before the book's pub date. And yes, you can vote early. Don't worry, we will make sure those votes are captured. And no, there is no limit to the number of titles you can vote for. The one thing that is really important is that Library Reads currently is only for titles published for adult readers. Uh, way back when we started, we had some YA crossover titles hit the list, but in spring 2018, we clarified that it's a little tricky for us to decide what's YA and what's not, and we all know appeal is subjective, so we really focus just on books published for the adult market. We welcome both fiction and nonfiction votes and votes for books by any publisher, as long as you can find them listed in Edelweiss or NetGalley. Now, if you're voting from a print arc, oh, no, that's okay, no problem. If you vote for a print arc, you might wanna vote via Edelweiss because NetGalley only gives you the option to vote once you have been approved for a title. Doesn't mean you have to read it or download it, but you have to be approved. Now we can move to the next one which is how do we get those galleys? So you just heard from two of our fantastic publisher friends today about upcoming books and how to get them from them. Now, at some point, we are going to go back to in-person events. I cannot wait. I miss all of my library friends so very much. So be sure to visit publisher booths to get those print copies. Help publishers find you, though, in the meantime, by filling out as many fields in the registration forms as possible on your NetGalley and Edelweiss accounts. Um, as you know, many publishers have fantastic staff devoted to at library outreach, like Lainey and Emily. These are great people to contact when there's a specific book that you want. And our friends over at Early Word have an excellent list of marketing contacts and information. You'll find that at earlyword.com slash publishers. It's got email addresses and website URLs for the different marketing folks out there in the publishing world. 
The other thing I want to point out really quick, Early Word, they host a monthly galley chat on Twitter. Those are a great place to learn about upcoming titles, and you can learn more about that um, at earlyword.com slash galley chat. Next slide. So one of the things that makes our list so special is that the books are annotated by the library staff people who are voting for them. We have some quick rules on that. And as I mentioned earlier, we have short videos online with tips and tricks for writing those annotations. Um, you can see two recent ones right there. We like to keep them kind of short and sweet, a little bit of a blurb. We like to do read-alikes. We're very fortunate that we partner with our friends at Novelist. Every month, they get a sneak peek at our list so that they can give us a novelist suggested read alike for every single book. Next slide. So here are some quick rules. And again, you'll find these on our website if you're interested in learning more. We do have to keep them a little short so that we can get everything on a one page poster. We do like them to be conversational and using appeal terms. And again, we love to encourage those read alikes. That's, I feel that's sort of the heart and soul of library readers advisory, right? So read alikes definitely encouraged. Next slide. What we don't want you to write is something like, hey, I liked this book a lot. <laughs> we are looking for that true library staff recommendation, right? Um, so tell us a little bit about that book and why you liked it. Again, you'll find all these tips and tricks on our website. Next slide. But here's a nice, another uh, recent one that we just did. Again, brief description of the plot, type of story it is, ends with a nice two book recommendation. Next slide. So please give one a try. We do edit the annotations. People always kind of worry, oh, I'm not a great writer. I cannot you know, do anything like that. Oh, you totally can. Give us a paragraph worth. And we have an editing team made of folks from our board. They will reach out to you. They will edit it, get your approval, and we get your annotation to go. It's really kind of fun to see your name on one of those annotations on our list. So please help us out and start writing some. Next slide. And so that is really it for me. Please feel free to email me at any time with questions about library reads and do check out our website for more information. I am right there, very easy, Rebecca at libraryreads.org. I'm always excited to see new names pop up on our vote list. So if you've got any trouble signing up for anything or you want some more personal tips and tricks on how to use it, feel free to reach out. I am always available. Thank you so much for having me and thank you everyone at Booklist for putting this webinar together. Thank you, Rebecca. So great to see you. And now we would like to present Booklist Reader, Booklist's new shareable patron-facing digital magazine, which features diverse readers' advisory recommendations for readers and listeners of all ages. Plus, we've partnered with our friends at Library Reads to bring you exclusive content like their top 10 and Hall of Fame lists. We're going to feature a short video that will tell you more about this new product and how you can share it with your patrons for free. Hi there. My name is Grace Rosine, and I'm the Marketing Specialist at Booklist Publications. Thank you for tuning in to our tutorial that will help you navigate the online edition of the Booklist Reader. During this session, we will help you get a better understanding of our new magazine, and we'll walk you through the process of sharing this wonderful publication with your patrons. We hope you find this tutorial helpful, but if you need further assistance, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at booklistonline.com. Without further ado, I'll pass things off to Booklist editor and publisher, George Kendall. Thanks so much, Grace. Hello and welcome. We were thrilled to launch our new publication named Booklist Reader for library patrons in September 2021. Each monthly issue is rich with diverse content for library patrons in all communities and for all ages and contains adult, youth, children, and audiobook recommendations. We hope Booklist Reader will be your reading companion because within each issue, Booklist editors produce timely, important, entertaining, and generally fabulous content for all book and audiobook lovers. Like 
author interviews like this one with John Bircher. Top 10 lists like these from our October issue. Informative and important features like reading together recent social justice choices for book groups from our November issue. Fantastic audiobook content like Fear, Fandom, and Trek Unite Us and Listen Alikes author narrated memoirs from our January issue. And reserve these reads for adults and youth in every issue, which are hot books patrons will want to reserve right away. We're also thrilled to partner with Library Reads and feature Library Reads content in every issue. To ensure your institution maximizes use of your book list subscription and enhances engagement with your community, I'm very happy to introduce Dan Kaplan, book list subscriptions and circulation manager, who will walk us through how to share a book list reader. Thank you very much, and Dan, over to you. Thank you, George, for pointing out those great highlights. Our goal is to promote reading, and as such, Booklist Reader content is intended to be shared widely. I'm going to walk you through the basics of how subscribing libraries can share a Booklist Reader via your website or through other communications to your users. Before you can share Booklist Reader, you'll need a user profile on booklistonline.com. If you've already got one, you're ready to go. Otherwise, look for this activate profile button that's up at the top of every page on Booklist Online. And here's where you'll fill out this form and you'll need to find your account number, uh, which is either on your uh, Booklist mailing label or through this lookup tool right here on this page. You could also email us at info at booklistonline.com if neither of those work for you. Uh, so let's sign into Booklist Online. And once you do, you'll see here that these this menu, my profile, is right here at the top. You'll find that on, on the top of every page. Here's where you can adjust your profile information. Look for the blue share booklist reader with your patrons button. On this page, you'll find your library's unique shareable link. The first tab is just a simple link. You can put that in a newsletter or on your website. Uh, the next one is an embed code, and this snippet of code can be placed on to a web page, and it'll display the current cover of Booklist Reader. The link will always stay the same, while the cover will automatically update. The size of the cover can be adjusted to fit your needs. I've copied this code into a dummy website to show you what you might expect. So here you can see the code that I've placed into this content management system and the resulting page. Uh, it's got a built-in link. And again, this cover will automatically change each, each month. Both the link and the cover will send users to this page on Booklist Online, the Booklist Reader Archive page. We have current issues and then, then previous issues. The page requires a sign-in, but using your unique link, your users will bypass that requirement and can read all the book, past Booklist Reader issues. I'll just quickly show you the user interface to our digital editions. And this operates the same whether you're reading a book list, book links, or a book list reader digital issue. You can quickly scroll through each page. You can view it in a different way. You can zoom in. Uh, you can print pages. You can print the whole thing, or you can print 
uh, individual pages. And I should mention that subscribing libraries have our permission to print either the full book list reader or individual pages, including the library reads page for circulation in your library. So again, if you have any problems setting up book list online profile, book list reader links, please email us at info at booklistonline.com. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan and George. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. As Dan mentioned, if you have any further questions about how to access or share <laughs> Booklist Online, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at booklistonline.com. We'd love to hear from you, and we are here to help. If you're interested in purchasing the Booklist Reader for your library, subscribe now to get print and online access to 22 issues of Booklist, 12 issues of the Booklist Reader, and three issues of book links for only $75. For more information, please visit www.booklistonline.com. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this new product, please feel free to email us. Also be sure to check out the Trade Secrets article included in the reminder email you received from Zoom. Written by Montoya Barker, public services librarian and adult programming expert at the Indianapolis Public Library, it features great tips about how you can use Booklist Reader to promote your collection, augment or create programs, and captivate your communities with fresh insights and ideas. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today and a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email link, an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past programs and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Not yet a subscriber? Pair the print reading experience with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com and lock in print, online, digital, and archive access by taking advantage of this special webinar offer to get Booklist for only $75. As you can tell, we are very excited about our new magazine. To see and share the latest issue, visit booklistonline.com slash reader dash issues. And recently, Booklist, Booklinks, and Booklist Reader joined the Overdrive Magazines program in partnership with Zinio and are available to your for your patrons to read in Libby. So catch up on the latest issues now. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. One more huge thank you to our panelists and to our sponsors, Sourcebooks and HarperCollins Publishers, and to our partner, Library Reads. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time. <laughs>